Hello, my name is HP van Braam. I am uh, part of the Godot Foundation Board and I run uh, a consulting company called Prehensile Tales. Um, so if you need some Godot consulting, come talk to me. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about using Godot uh, to make non-game projects and why you might want to do that. So the program that is open here is uh, called MSEP1. It's an open source project. You're, uh, you can go look at the website now if you would like. Um, this is a tool to um, design and manipulate uh, complex molecular machines. And um, this whole thing is built inside of Godot. So you see here we have um, a Godot UX used for everything and of course a Godot renderer. So why would you want to do this and why did we choose Godot for, for this? Well, one of the things we needed to do was we needed to have a, a very tight integration between our UX and uh, the actual like uh, uh, tools, uh, the, the actual like uh, design space that uh, people were using. So this allowed us to very quickly make something that looks pretty and also works, uh, works well. Um, a interesting uh, part about this is that um, because, we are, uh, because we can use all the Godot platform abstractions, making it work uh, across all of the platforms that Godot normally supports was really easy as well. And uh, because uh, we didn't have to write our own renderer, because that was actually one of the interesting things about this whole um, type of project, is that there, were, there are other tools to do molecular modeling and molecular editing, uh, but they all kind of like start out from the, uh, I'm gonna make a word processor with some 3D rendering in it, right? So they start off writing a UX in Qt or, uh, or something, and then they need to somehow have a high performance renderer and what they tend to do is end up writing their own renderer for their own project, and in the beginning that looks really cool and is really nice, but now you end up, what? Oh, five minutes left. Oh, <laughs> sorry, I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, um, so they end up writing their own uh, renderers, and that goes great at the beginning, but then suddenly you want to render something that's a little bit bigger, so now you, you have to figure out how to make this go fast and look pretty. And uh, we found that Godot is actually like really, scales like really well for this sort of stuff. So what we did here is basically we have written a, um, a shader uh, which uh, takes this uh, molecular um, scene, leaves the actual molecules entirely in the, um, uh, in, the, in the video memory, and we basically just render uh, this uh, out without like sending all the geometry over, which allows us to do pretty cool things such as, uh, let's see, this is not my laptop, and it's like a weird quartz keyboard, so I I'm, I'm hope that this all goes well. Let's see. So we have like a variety of different like representations here, so we can really quickly change how things look, and this is all done on the GPU as well, so we don't send like a whole pile of geometry in. Um, and because we're building this on top of a game engine, uh, we get all of this stuff for free, right? So we don't have to be uh, experts in UX, we don't, have to, we don't have to be experts in UX, molecular dynamics, and GPU stuff, right? So this, this saved us a lot of time, so we were able to achieve a really fully fledged uh, thing with integration uh, with uh, external uh, MD tools in about like three to four months. Have, we had a first version ready and then we've just been able to iterate on this, add new features, et cetera, without really having to ever invent everything from scratch. Another nice thing about using Godot for this was that because it's open source, we were able to very easily interface this with like real scientific tools. So in the background here, we have a um, molecular dynamics physics engine running called OpenMM, which lets us do like real actual physics. So you don't, you're not necessarily constrained to use like, I don't know, game physics to try to do your molecular dynamics, which we have tried briefly, that does, does not work very well. Does not work very well at all. Um, so I still have three minutes and I think I'm kind of done talking. So I think, uh, I hope you like this and uh, go see the website. Uh, M sub one. <laughs>